Today we're going to be playing a game of Escape the Dark Castle right after this. Hey everybody, Sam here from the Tabletop Hub, your one-stop shop for all things tabletop. And today we are playing a solo game of Escape the Dark Castle. Uh, this is kind of going to double up as a how to play as well as a let's play. Uh, I apologise as well for this invasive camera here over on my right. Uh, this is just going to give you an overview of what I see here on the table. Now, for those of you who don't know what this game is, uh, I've actually done a review of Escape the Dark Castle. Uh, it's a bit of an RPG light type dungeon crawler. It's an amazing game. I absolutely love this. Uh, and I've played it with my family numerous times who aren't gamers, by the way, and they've absolutely loved it as well. Uh, if you want to check out my review, you can click a card up in the uh, top right of your screen. There's a little annotation that should pop up there for you. But today, what I wanted to do was to actually play through a game of Escape the Dark Castle uh, and show you how it plays and what the experience is like. One of the things I love about this game as well is that you can play the entire experience solo and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, I'm going to be playing with three characters and we're going to try and escape the Dark Castle as well. So let's head over to the table here and I'll show you how to set up the game and what components you'll need. So first of all, uh, what I've done is I've chosen my characters uh, and I've chosen to go with the Tanner, the Smith, uh, and the cook. Now the reason for that is because I've, I've tried to balance out slightly as you can see the cook uh, and the smith here uh, they both have uh, kind of the maximum uh, have might as their max stat uh, and then they've alternate got the uh, wisdom and cunning. Um, main reason for that is because most of the games that I've played might has come up quite a bit. I'm taking a little bit of a gamble here uh, in hedging my bets with might. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, and then we've supplemented that with the Tanner uh, who has got uh, wisdom and cunning uh, as her max stats. So hopefully that will um, that'll prove useful <laughs> as we go forward. I'm going to be honest, I, I don't think we're going to get out of the castle alive but we'll give it a good shot. Uh, so that's what you're going to want to do first is uh, pick your characters. Uh, and then obviously over on my little uh, stat sheet here, uh, this is how I'm going to keep track of health uh, and any extra information I need. Because this is a three player game, uh, all the characters are going to start off with 14 health points. Uh, if it was a one or two player game, I don't know why you would play this with one person, like one character, are you insane? You would uh, start off with 18 health points uh, and if you play a four player game, which is the maximum amount of uh, playable characters you can have on the table at one time, uh, they would all have 12 health points each. Uh, one thing I would recommend is that you, you can play this game with five people, uh, but with four playable characters. I've done this before where uh, I actually got my family to be the four playable characters and then I acted as the kind of dungeon master and I narrated and kept track of health points and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a really good way to uh, introduce new people to the game uh, and a good way to kind of practice your dungeon master skills as well. So whenever we set up the actual uh, castle deck, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is pick a random boss. That's what I've got right here. I don't know who this is. Needless to say, they're going to be really, really tough. We're going to set that down first. Uh, and then out of your castle cards, you're going to shuffle the castle card deck and then deal out 15 uh, of those castle cards, which I've, I've equally done as well uh, before I started recording. Uh, and then you're going to top off the deck uh, with the starting card, uh, which we're going to do now. I should say as well, you're going to want to make sure that you get the uh, dice that belong to your associated characters uh, and assign that to them as well. So now that we've got everything set up, all that's left to do is to uh, begin our journey of escaping the dark castle. Uh, so let's get stuck in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really nervous about this. Uh, this game is terrifyingly punishing. So let's turn over the first card uh, and we shall begin. After years of incarceration in the depths of the Dark Castle, you finally break free of your cell. In a small stone room adjoining the cell block stands an old wooden chest. The lock is open. Draw an item card per, per player now. Uh, we'll do that after I read this card. Uh, you hear footsteps approaching. You must not linger here. You make for the exit, slipping away and disappearing into the darkness. 
turn over the first chapter card now. So let's deal a uh, item card per clip. Oh my goodness. That's a, that's a good draw to start off with. Uh, so we've got the Golden Axe, the Fury Shard, and a Steel Loaf of Bread. My goodness. The Golden Axe, by the way, uh, it's a two-handed weapon. This, from what I remember, this doesn't come in the core set of the box. Uh, it is an add-on. Highly recommend getting it. It's like the Golden Axe has saved my ass more times than I care to imagine. Uh, it's a two-handed weapon. Uh, so in combat, you're going to roll the Golden Axe dice along with your character dice, uh, which is this beautiful golden dice here. Um, if you roll an axe, you remove any one chapter dice, but if I roll a skull, I will lose one health point, uh, and then I discard the golden axe as well. There's only two of these uh, inside the entire item deck, so they're incredibly rare. I swear I did not, I did not rig the deck to draw that. Um, what's useful about the golden axe is if you uh, see the dice here, it's all doubles. Uh, so you've got uh, double wisdom, double might, double, double cunning, you've got a block, remove any chapter dice. Uh, you've only got one chance of, uh, of ruling that skull. Very, very useful. Love that. Okay, we're actually going to give that to the Tanner. Let's give it to the Tanner. We can always swap it around later. Um, we will give the Steel Loaf of Bread to the Smith. Uh, we'll give the Fury Shard to the Cook. Now, one thing to note, because that Golden Axe is two-handed, that is the only item uh, that the Tanner will be able to carry uh, unless we, we swap out with another character. You're going to want to keep an eye on that, uh, on those item cards whenever you are drawing them. Uh, each character can only carry a maximum of two items. Um, so if you see a weapon that says two-handed, uh, you've already got it, already got one item in your inventory, you may need to swap that with another character uh, or discard it before you can, you can pick it up. So because of that, we're going to choose the Tanner to go through the door first. So let's see what she finds. So you pass through a chamber which serves as a cesspit below the castle privies. Lovely. As you pick your way through the filth, something unusual catches your eye. We get to draw an item card. Look at this. <laughs> so it is distilled wisdom. We can discard this to apply a single wisdom at any time. Um, the Tanner can't carry that, so she's going to give it to the cook. Just because. Uh, and because she's doing so well, we're going to get her to go through the door again. Uh, oh, right, this is a little bit different this time. Uh, here, a man sits at a table, his face shrouded in shadow. Uh, as you age past, he lurches forward and pulls you close with a snarl, revealing his scarred face and rancid intentions. As a grip, it's pretty much me, uh, choose one option. I can flee, uh, so the Tanner will struggle free and get away, but not before the Tanner loses three health points at the hands of the Patriot Captain, or we can choose to begin combat. I think we're probably going to begin combat. That's an important, by the way. The reason why I'm choosing a person to go through the door is because um, certain at certain times you will come across uh, scenarios that, that say that you, in bold letters, meaning the person that's gone through the door, um, and that something will happen to them. So make sure to always choose a person as a group, uh, someone to go through that door. I think we're going to, to choose to, to fight uh, this rancid captain rather than lose those precious health points because of course, if one person dies, it's game over. Uh, so the way that we, we do this, by the way, uh, as you'll see on uh, the rancid captain's card, we will assign him a might, one wisdom, and then this little icon here, this means that we roll a black dice per character, per active player. Um, because there's three characters, but only one player, we're going to roll three extra dice. Um, so we give him a might, we'll give him a wisdom, and then let's roll the dice. Hopefully the dice gods will be kind. Uh, it could have been, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. So we got one extra might and too cunning. We just need to hope that we can um, roll some doubles here. Uh, now, the way that this now works is that I take all of our character dice, including the golden axe, which is lovely, um, and we're going to roll and see what we do. Now, if, if we take away all of the black dice, we defeat him, we get an item card. Uh, if we don't, uh, you'll see in the bottom right of his card, we, we will suffer two damage. Uh, at the hands of this future captain. So let's begin. Whoa. Okay. Okay. That's not 
too bad. So the cook rolled a mite, so we can take one of his mite dice away, which is perfect. The smith actually rolled a double um, as well as a shield, so he not only takes away the final mite, but he will actually block an attack. The tanner rolled a uh, cunning. Oh, uh, that goes back to the tanner, which takes away one of those. She also rolled the axe, which removes any one chapter dice. Now, we're going to be a little bit sneaky here. So we're going to take away, we're going to use the golden axe dice to take away another cunning dice because uh, the cook is then going to use distilled wisdom. Um, so as you can see from the card here, we can use this to discard to apply a single wisdom at any time. Um, because of that, and we've only got a wisdom dice left, we're going to discard this, get rid of the wisdom, Putrid Captain is defeated, and because he is defeated, we get to draw an item card. And it is a crackled axe. So, uh, two-handed weapon, in combat, roll a chapter dice along with your character dice each time you attack and apply both results. You know what? The cook, because he uh, sacrificed his distilled wisdom there, he's going to give the fury shard to the smith, uh, and is going to apply the cracked axe. This feels rigged. I feel like the comments are gonna be like, this is rigged. There's no way you, you are drawing these cards. Um, we're probably still gonna die, I'll be honest with you. So that is one thing, you can uh, swap items between characters, but you have to be outside of combat uh, in order to be doing that. So you can't be fighting someone and then be having a chat with your mate being like, hey, can, do you wanna give me that distilled wisdom and I'll give you a loaf of bread? Everything's got to be calm uh, and collected. Uh, so it's usually at this point before you walk through to the next room that you'll you'll sort that stuff out. So um, nobody's lost any health points. We're two rooms in, 13 rooms to go. Uh, Tanner's going to go through the door again. So you wipe dust from the lid of a large tomb, hoping to read its inscription at your torch or at your touch, sorry, the lid slides open and a giant knight rises, bellowing that you should not have disturbed him. As a group, we choose one option. We can flee, uh, and as we run, um, you are hacked by the Revenant. The Tanner would lose three health points, or we can fight and begin combat. Now, there is a combat special here. You'll get these for some enemies. Um, all players may fight as normal, but the Tanner is the only player the giant attacks, and the Tanner may not rest. I think we go for it. He doesn't have a lot of dice. We've got a ton of weapons. I think we risk it. So we give him one wisdom. We'll roll three dice for him, which is one might and two cunning. Now, remember, the cook gets to roll an extra chapter dice. Tanner has the golden axe. The smith has nothing, but that's fine because we'll pretend that he crafted the items for everybody else. Uh, so let's roll. Gosh, so many dice. Okay, we've defeated him. So the cook, uh, along with his his axe, rolled two cunning. Uh, so they're gone. The tanner rolled a wisdom, which is gone. And the smith uh, and the golden axe all rolled might. Gone. This is this is too easy. I, I don't like this. We get to uh, pull a item card because we defeated an, an enemy. Uh, note, you only get to roll, pull one item card for uh, an enemy that you've defeated. You don't draw one per player, but we got some liquid luck. So we can discard to re-roll your character dice, applying only the second result. Um, I think we're going to discard that because uh, I like the Fury Shard more. The Fury Shard, for those of you who don't know, that basically says that once per round of combat, when I roll a double, I can roll again and apply both results. So I feel like that gives us better uh, stats. So once again, Tanner's going to go through the door. She's been serving us well so far. So uh, a haggard old woman appears out of nowhere and offers to read your fortune. Something in her eyes speaks of a greater power. You feel it is wise to comply. Uh, each player must individually declare a trait and then try to roll it in one attempt. Right? For each player, if I succeed, I can gain one HP or draw an item card. Uh, and if I feel the witch steals part of your soul and I lose one health point. So, I mean, we're still at full health, so this isn't a massive uh, loss. The Tanner is going to try and roll Wisdom because that is the stat that she has the most of. The Cook is going to try and roll Might 
uh, and the smith will try and roll might as well. We're just going to try and stack the odds in our favour uh, and roll for whatever that character has the most of. So, um, oh, we have one attempt here as well. So the smith, let's see what we get. Okay, <laughs> smith loses a health point. Uh, he's now down to 13. Uh, Cook was going for might as well. Oh, which he got, that's fine. Uh, we're going to draw an item card there. Um, and then the Tanner is going for Wisdom. Oh. oh wait, this isn't combat, I don't roll the Golden Axe dice, which is good because we roll the Skull, which would have made us lose that, but it's not combat, so we don't roll that. Uh, equally, the Cook shouldn't have rolled his Black Carter dice, but he did roll the Might on the White dice. Got to keep myself right. Um, Hopefully that wasn't cheating, uh, but the Tanner rolled the Wisdom, so she equally pulls a uh, item card as well. So, obviously the Tanner and the Cook can't hold these items because their hands are full. We did uh, pull a Steel Loaf of Bread and an Elixir of Insight. The Elixir of Insight we're just going to throw away, but the Smith, remember, he was uh, a health point down. He's going to eat his steel loaf of bread to gain two health points. Uh, he can only go up to 14 though, and then the cook is going to give him the steel loaf of bread that he's just found. So once again, we're all still at 14 health points going into the next room. We're doing good. Tanner is going to go through. So, you ascend a narrow spiral staircase emerging onto a windswept bell tower. As you cross the tower, the bell swings into life, its dreary peal shaking your very bones. Any player who cannot roll wisdom or a double in one attempt loses two health points as the sound begins to drive them insane. Okay, remember, this is not combat, so golden axe and the cracked axe don't apply. So we need wisdom, which is the little asterisk symbol. So let's go for the smith first. Unlucky. <laughs> let's go for the cook. These are really bad rules. He equally loses. Tanner is the only one. Okay, so Smith and Cook, you both lose two health points. So Cook is down to 12, Smith is down to 12. We're not gonna use the steel loaf of bread because I don't really think we need to at this point. We're still doing pretty well. And we're how many rooms in? Five rooms in, we've got 10 rooms to go. I think we got this. Uh, Tanner's going to go through the room, the, the door first because they've got full health. So, to enter this door, you are forced to push aside thick thorn-covered vines. They spring to life, binding your wrists and hauling you into the thicket beyond. The Tanner loses one health point. Uh, hacking at the aggressive weeds eventually causes them to recede through cracks in the old stone walls, leaving behind the belongings of previous victims. We get to draw two item cards. This seems way too easy, this round. So the uh, Tanner is now down to 13 health points. We draw two item cards, which is a partially rotten apple uh, and an elixir of insight. Um, we're going to... We're going to get rid of the elixir of insight. We don't really need it. Uh, we're going to consume I guess, the Rotten Apple. Um, or we're gonna get the uh, the Smith or the Cook could eat it. So we'll get the uh, Cook to eat the Rotten Apple. That puts them up to 13 health points. And the Tanner will go through the door once more. All right. So, as these three old women draw near, you notice their feet do not touch the ground. With a cackle, they lunge, probing for you with withered hands and rotten tongues. We begin combat, and again, there's a combat special here. Uh, so the first time the Risen Hags are defeated, before drawing an item card, roll a chapter dice. If the result is Wisdom, they regenerate. You must restart combat and defeat them a second time. They only do one damage. They've only got one dice, so they seem like they could be easy enough to defeat. Uh, and then we roll the three extra dice for uh, the characters. So, let's go. Okay, quite a varied mix here. So in order to defeat the hags, we need two wisdom, one cunning and one might. Um, I don't think we want to use, there's, there's no item cards we want to use. We're just going to jump right into it. We've still got the cracked axe and the golden axe. So many dice here now. Oh, 
Okay, so uh, the Smith um, and the Cracked Axe both rolled a Might, so that's fine. Um, the Tanner rolled a Wisdom, so we get rid of one of those. The Cook rolled a Cunning, so we can get rid of one of those. And the Tanner equally rolled a Shield on their Golden Axe, so they get to block so they don't take one wound. Unfortunately, everybody else does. So the smith is down to 11, the cook is down to 12, uh, and we, we basically just get to roll again. So we're only looking for one wisdom here. Uh, and we got that easily. So that goes away. However, um, we now get to trigger their combat special. So remember, uh, this is the first time they've been defeated. Before we get to draw an item card, we have to roll one chapter dice. Uh, if it's Wisdom, they're going to regenerate. We have to fight them from scratch all over again. So we want anything apart from Wisdom, which is the asterisk. Which is exactly what we got. <laughs> Typical. All right. So, oh gosh, right. Basically, now we just need everything Wisdom. They can't regenerate after we defeat them this time. But we're looking for four Wisdom, four asterisks. Gosh. Okay, that was close, oh crap, that was close enough. So, the Tanner got three wisdom, which is good. Uh, the Smith got uh, one cunning and the Cook got a might and a cunning. Um, there's nothing really we can do about that. None of our item cards will affect that, so unfortunately, Everyone is going to take a wound there because no one blocked. Uh, so, now we roll again. Oh, okay, no, I was... No one, no one rolled uh, any wisdom, but the golden axe rolled the golden axe. So we get to remove any one chapter dice. So the wisdom is gone. They are now defeated and we draw an item card, which is Everfescent Evasion. Uh, whenever you would lose health points, we discard this item to lose none. I think we're actually... So the smith is going to eat their steel loaf of bread to regain two health points. Uh, and then they're going to hold on to that. That seems like something I'm going to want to keep for like a big boss fight. So at the end of that room, the tanner has 12 health points, the smith has 12 health points, and the cook has 11. Um, so, just to, to shift it up, the smith is going to go through the next door. Oh dear. Right, several armed figures spring from the shadows and attack. You become separated and each player must fight alone. Roll a chapter dice in front of each player to represent the muggers attacking them. However, the muggers want your items. Players are carrying two items. <laughs> <laughs> Roll two chapter dice instead of one, and we begin combat. And here's the combat spatial for this time. Uh, each time a player would take damage from a mugger, they may avoid it by discarding an item. No player can rest until the muggers attacking them are defeated. They may then either rest or help another player defeat theirs. A player aiding another takes damage as normal and must declare who they are aiding before they roll. So because the smith has two items, we have to roll two chapter dice for his muggers, so it's uh, one might and one wisdom. Uh, the cook and the tanner, they're both holding one item. They just need might. So let's start with the tanner and work our way across. So they didn't get any of the dice they needed. <laughs> the cook. Um, they did. Their mugger is defeated. And the smith... Oh, that is really lucky. You can see they rolled a double might. Uh, so they can get rid of one might. We're not going to use their item that allows them to roll again if they roll a double because they rolled a shield. Um, the tanner is going to lose one health. Hmm... Um, now we have the decision, because the, the cook is available, he can then help someone else. I think the tanner will be fine on their own. They need to roll a might. 
Actually, maybe not. You know what? The cook is going to help the tanner to roll one mite. Oh gosh, none of them. Oh, actually, hold on. We got the golden axe, so uh, that's fine. That was really lucky. Um, now the smith needs to roll a wisdom. They don't. They just rolled a double might, but they blocked. Now everyone is going to actually know who, what's our health like. The cook and the tanner are on 11. So the, ta the cook is going to actually rest, which will enable them to regain one health point. Uh, the tanner is going to help the smith roll a wisdom because the tanner has way more wisdom. Much smarter person. Oh dear. Right. So the smith ruled uh, a double wisdom without the tanner's help anyway. However, the tanner did try to help and ruled the skull on the golden axe, which means that we actually now lose the beloved golden axe and we also lose a health point. So they are now down to 10, which is really crap. <laughs> I love the golden axe, but we've still got the cracked axe. That's fine. Um, so the um, smith is going to go through the next room, uh, go through the door first, because they've got the most health. Oh dear. So, where there was once flesh and fur, the bones of this skeletal beast now crackle with the menacing power of dark magic. We begin combat. This is a tough guy. Uh, combat special is whenever you would remove a chapter dice by hitting the enemy, roll it instead. If the result is wisdom, do not remove it. Put it back wisdom side up. So we're going to do two damage if it hits. Uh, we've got a cunning, a wisdom, and then we roll three dice as well. So there's cunning and wisdom. Three dice, which is... Uh, another wisdom and another cunning, as well as one might. Okay. Well, I guess there's nothing really for it. I think we're going to get everyone to join in this time. And we can rest going forward. Okay, so the cook with his axe rolls two might, which, you know, it is what it is. Um, then the tanner and smith both roll wisdom. Oh, actually, sorry. We bring those back, so we have to re-roll them because of the combat special. So, put those there. We'll remove these ones so we can keep track of everything. Remember, whenever you attack the skeletal beast here, whenever instead of removing a chapter dice, you have to re-roll it. We want anything but wisdom. <laughs> wisdom is back in. Wisdom is back in. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> welcome to Escape the Dark Castle, folks, where if it can go wrong, it will. Uh, basically, all those chapter dice go back in as wisdom, uh, and we all now take two damage. Um, perfect. So, Tanner is down to eight, Smith's down to ten, Cook's down to ten. Let's kill this thing, shall we? Um, okay. Uh, still isn't really great, is it? Um, so, Cook and the Smith take away one of those. Tanner takes away one of those. Let's once again put these up here. This enemy could kill us. Uh, we want anything but wisdom here, folks. Okay, so these two get taken away. There is one more wisdom back in, though. The Tanner is actually going to rest because... They only have eight health points. Uh, let's take their dice out. All right. So we're going to take two wisdom out. Let's re-roll them again. We're slowly whittling it down. It's now just down to two dice. So, ta uh, and then Smith and Cook take some damage. Everyone's going to rejoin the fight. This is a really tough enemy. We, we, we had a really strong start, but uh, okay. So the tanner, we take those away. We have to re-roll them. If, as long as they don't show up as wisdom, we have defeated this enemy. Perfect. It's done. Uh, we got the healing verses. Uh, whenever you roll a double, you may restore one health point to any character. 
That is a really nice card and I will give that to the Tanner. Thank you very much. So at the end of that room, the Tanner has nine, the Smith has eight and the Cook has eight. Now I actually think we missed some damage there. Uh, I think the Smith and the Cook should have six. So we're going to, I'm going to penalize myself just in case. Um, I think we missed two lots of damage, I think actually from everybody. So Tanner is on seven, Smith's on six and the Cook is on six. So the Tanner is going to go through the door first. We are nearing the end boss. I don't think we're going to make it, but we'll try our best. So uh, you've been hunted by the ferocious castle hounds. You become separated and each of you must fight alone. Uh, roll a chapter dice in front of each player to represent the hounds attacking them. However, the hounds can sense weakness. Players with less than half their starting HP should roll two chapter dice instead. Oh dear. So the combat spatial is very similar to the muggers that we met a couple of rooms back. Uh, you can't rest until your hounds are defeated. Once your hounds are defeated, you can then choose to help someone or rest as well. Now, the Tanner has seven health, uh, which is exactly half of uh, her starting health. We only roll one for her. Uh, which is a wisdom, uh, cunning, sorry. Now the Smith and the Cook, however, have six health points each, which is less than half uh, of their starting health. So we need to roll two chapter dice for them, unfortunately. So two might for the Smith and for the Cook, a might and a wisdom. Oof, right. So the Tanner, we'll start with you. You need a cunning. And you got it. Ah, and because you rolled a double, uh, we can restore one health point to any character. Uh, we're gonna actually give that to the cook. So put them up to seven, beautiful. Uh, the cook's then gonna roll next. So we need one might and one wisdom. Ooh, lovely. We didn't get a wisdom, we got a might, but we rolled a double, which means that we're blocked from any damage. Uh, and then the smith. Just has to roll a double might if possible, but it, it, they don't. But they roll a, a block anyway. That's perfect, actually. Everybody's um, everybody's protected. So we're going to roll again. I think the Tanner is going to. I should probably just get everybody to fight here. I would like the Tanner to get some more health, but I think we're just going to get everybody to fight. So the Tanner is going to help the smith yes tanner's going to help the smith need two might <sighs> ah dang it we got one both of them will now take damage though so the tanner loses one uh, and the smith loses one as well and then the cook just needs one wisdom which he doesn't get but he rolled a shield so he's technically fine um Again, Smith and Tanner going to help each other, which is fine. The Tanner also rolled a double. Smith rolled the might. Uh, and that because we rolled a double, remember the Tanner gets to use their healing verses, which will give a health point back to the Smith, bringing them up to six. The Cook just needs one wisdom again, which they didn't get. <laughs> uh, so we're now down to six. Everybody's just going to help uh, the Cook. Oh. Uh, yeah, they're fine. Uh, the Tanner didn't roll a double though, unfortunately, so we don't get any extra benefits. Uh, we do get, oh, we get an item for uh, defeating the wolves. We get the Decayed Blade, which is a one-handed weapon. So once per round of combat, when you roll Wisdom, you may roll again and choose which of the two results to apply. We're going to give that to the Tanner, because they have a spare hand. Um, so they're kind of turning into some kind of healing vanguard right now. Um, End of that room, Tanner has six health points, Smith has six health points, and the Cook has six health points. We're kind of all on even footing. Um, Smith's gonna go through the room first, through the door first. Right, so, as you pass an ornate mirror in this bedchamber, twisted versions of yourself step through it with murderous intent. You become separated and must fight alone. Each player must roll their dice twice and place corresponding chapter dice in front of them to represent their doppelganger, Place only one dice for each double rolled. We begin combat and um, combat spatial, exactly the same as the wolves. So each player has to roll their dice twice, okay? So for the cook, 
Uh, actually, let's start off with the smith. Uh, one wisdom. And a cunning. Not great for him. Um, for the cook. Uh, one cunning. And one might. Uh, and then for the tanner. Uh, one wisdom. And one might. Okay, not great for any of them, really. <laughs> uh, let's start off the cook. Um, so he actually gets uh, a double, uh, a double might and a, and a shield. So he's blocked. Uh, he just needs to get a cunning next. Uh, Smith. Oh, that was far. Uh, got one cunning. Um, oh, and we're going to use his... Maybe we're not, actually. We're going to save his Evervescent Evasion, I think. Um, so he will take... Uh, one damage and the tanner now rules nothing of use uh, so they, they also take one health uh, hit so everybody rules again really start with the smith oh they did it so they are now free uh, the cook are is also free uh, and the tanner is still rolling rubbish. So they're now down to four health points. Everybody's going to help the tanner. We need to, we need to save the tanner. Okay. And they are safe. The tanner rolled a double, which is going to give themselves uh, a health point back to get them back up to five. So at the end of that room, um, oh, we also get to draw an item card because we defeated an enemy, which is a partially rotten apple. We can discard that for one health point. The tanner is going to consume that uh, to get back up to six. So at the end of the room, tanner's on six, smith is on five, cook is on six. Uh, and the smith is going to go through the door, uh, mainly because they have that effervescent evasion. So if they do take any damage by going through the room, uh, they can waylay that. Uh, it's not looking good though. Uh, something is blocking the door to this chamber and you use your shoulder to force it open. It is only when you step inside, eggshell crunching underfoot, that you realize you have destroyed a creature's nest. There is a mournful wail as it approaches from the darkness, its sorrow soon turning to fury. Uh, we begin combat. Combat special is all players fight as normal, but the smith is the only player that this creature attacks and the smith may not rest. And it's going to do two damage per turn. Um, Health-wise, it gets a might. A cunning, and then three of our dice. Oh, two more cunning, and another might. It's going to be a toughie. Right, okay. I'm just going to get everybody to jump in here, really. If we're really lucky, we'll roll some doubles. Which we do, actually. The smith, very flukily, rolls a double might with a shield. Cook rolled a might, as well as a wisdom, which isn't useful at all. Uh, and the tanner ruled a cunning. Now, because the um, smith went through the door, this, this beast is only attacking him. He ruled the shield, so nobody takes damage this turn, uh, and everyone's going to rule again next turn um, as a celebratory rule for nobody taking damage. We need two cunning, which we get. Everybody ruled cunning there. Uh, the tanner equally ruled a double, so she gets to restore a health point to someone. She's going to give that to the smith, to get everybody back up to six health points uh, and the enemy is defeated. So uh, let's take an item card, which is Liquid Luck. Uh, we can discard this to re-roll your character dice, applying only the second result. Nobody has a free item slot, so we're just gonna discard that uh, and storm through into the next room. There are only four cards left, three rooms left until we get to the big boss. Uh, the Smith, once more, will go through the door first. Oh, right. I don't think I've come across this room before. At the end of the winding passage, a wooden chest covered in cobwebs is protected by a gauntlet of vicious-looking traps. As a group, we got to choose one option. We can move on, and uh, we just turn the next chapter card, or we can risk it. I nominate a player to try and retrieve the items from the chest. They must roll cunning in one attempt and may try this as many times as there are players. So if I succeed... For each time I succeed, I get to draw an item card. 
I get to draw two on a double cunning if I feel the nominated player loses two health points. Honestly, as much as it would be nice to try it and maybe get another golden axe or more healing items, um, losing two health points each failure I don't think is worth it. Uh, and we do have an opportunity to just move on to the next room without taking any damage. So I think that's what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna look at those traps, appreciate that they look lovely, uh, and, then, and then move on. Uh, so next room, Smith is going through first. Whoa, right, as you pass a heavy wooden door, it flies open and a ragged madman bursts through. He wields his shackles as a weapon and his crazed stare sends a clear message. You stand between him and freedom. So the Smith must try to roll might or a double in one attempt. If I succeed, I manage to deflect his wild feeling and we begin combat. If I fail, I get take I get some damage and we begin combat anyway. Uh, so let's set out his dice first, which is one might, one cunning, and then three uh, of our dice. So he gets another might, another cunning, and a wisdom. Uh, right -o. Put those there. Uh, now the smith has to try and roll might or a double, which he does. So he doesn't take any damage. We still got to fight him though. Uh, and I think everyone's just going to fight him. Uh, I think we're this close. Everybody might as well join in. Um, okay, so the smith rolls a double. So that's done. Um, we're going to use the fury shard. So once per round of combat, actually maybe not yet, the Tanner and the Cook's Axe. Take care of that. Let's risk it. We're gonna, the Smith is going to um, use the Fury Shard. So once per round of combat, when I roll a double, I can roll again and apply both results. So we're gonna do that again in the hopes that we get a Wisdom. We don't, we don't at all. <laughs> but we roll a double, so the Smith is fine. The Cook and the Tanner, however, both take two damage. They're both now down to four health points. Um, I think everybody's got to just join in here. There's no time to rest. No one rolls a wisdom. No one. Oh dear. Oh dear. We're so close to the end here, folks. Actually, the cook doesn't take any damage. You're fine. You roll the double. Uh, right, the tanner physically needs to sit this one out because they only have two health left. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, still no wisdom. So the smith uh, and the cook now down to two health points. The smith is going, no, the cook is going to rest this time. Uh, the tanner and the smith are going to, um, are going to fight. This is, we could die, we could die right now. Oh my goodness, right. Okay, yes, this is why we did this. So, the tanner um, ruled a double and a shield. So, she's gonna give herself that health. Um, no, she's not actually. She's going to give that to the smith. Um, now, the smith would be dead right now, but remember he has the effervescent evasion, so we can discard this to, whenever we would lose health points to lose none. Oh my goodness. Right. So, everyone is at three health. Everyone is going to attack. <laughs> if we fail this, we're all at one health point. Oh, thank the Lord. Right, the Tanner uh, rolled a Wisdom. Now, whenever she does roll Wisdom, because of her, her shield or sword, she can roll again and choose which one to apply. So either way, we've defeated them. Let's just see if we roll a double, which we do. We roll a double Wisdom. So he's defeated, and we give that health point to the Tanner, let's say. Let's just give it to the Tanner. Oh, and we get a wooden shield. Uh, whenever we would lose health point, reduce the amount by one. We're going to give that to the smith, because he is nothing. Um, right. That was a really bad room. Um, the tanner's going to go through the next door first, I guess. 
Oh gosh, right. A skeletal form lies slumped in the corner of this dark chamber. Beneath the dust of ages, it still clutches a mouldering map. As a group, we choose one option. We can move on because something isn't right here and we turn the next chapter card. Or we can try and steal the map. Uh, we nominate a player to try and roll two wisdom in three attempts. If we succeed, the map leads to a hidden cache and we draw two item cards. If we feel the skeleton twitches and then rises from its ancient slumber to punish you, destroying the map in its rage. Uh, and then we begin combat. See, my greed tells me that we should try this and get the tanner to go for it. Um, or maybe get the cook to go for it. But it's not, it's not combat, so um, it would still only have one dice. I think, we, I think we'd try this because the next, the next card is the boss. And the tanner has four health points. The smith and the cook have three. If we can get some more health items, that would be beautiful. So I think we're going to risk this um, if I feel we're, we're all going to die. But let's go for it. We need two wisdom in three rolls. It's all cumulative as well. There's one. Now, it's in combat. Never mind. Never mind. There's one. We need one more. We've got two more rolls to get one more wisdom. We got, oh crap, we got it. We got it. So, oh, okay. So we got a cunning concoction, which uh, we can discard to apply a single cunning at any time. And we got a partially rotten apple. We can discard this to restore one health point to a player. Um, we're going to discard the apple to give the cook one health point. We're going to give the smith that concoction uh, to get a cunning. Um, okay. Folks, we're, we're here. We're at the final, final room. So this is it. You have reached the final challenge. One last obstacle stands between you and freedom. Let's see what boss we have to take care of. Oh no, it's the demented priestess. Uh, you cannot harm me. Behold the devotion of my followers. The priestess is protected by her possessed underlings, which is the row of chapter dice showing might. Uh, all of these dice must be removed before you're able to attack the priestess herself. She does three damage per turn. Now, there's three might for her underlings. Which is them. For the priestess, she has one wisdom and then we roll three dice as well. I'm going to be honest with you, we've done well to get this far. But we had such a strong start as well. Um, so, the priestess is two wisdom, one cunning, and one might. So let's see, how are we gonna do this? I honestly think we just go all out, balls to the wall on this. Um, whenever she does damage, because of the shield, um, she'll actually only do two damage to the smith who only has three health points left. So we have two turns. We have two turns to defeat her, and I, I think it's possible. Oh, gosh, right, okay. Dice God, please, please be with me. That was not the roll we wanted to do. The Tanner rolled a double, the Smith rolled a wisdom, and the Cook rolled. We basically rolled nothing that we needed, and we needed to roll might there. All right, so, um, so nothing happens. <laughs> uh, basically, the smith has two health points taken away, so they're now down to one. Tanner has none taken away because they shielded. Um, the cook gets three damage, so they're now down to one as well. Because the Tanner rolled a double, we get to add one health point. Even if we give that to one of the other characters, it wouldn't save them if they didn't roll a double next turn. I think we give it to the cook. We get the smith to rest. 
And then we hope and pray that the cook rolls a shield. Uh, if the cook doesn't roll a shield this turn, it's game over, man. It's game over. Okay, the cook rolled a shield. Tanner rolled a might. Uh, we rolled one of those as well. Okay, so Tanner is now down to one health point. <sighs> the Tanner is going to rest. Should put it up to two. The Smith, the Smith, and the Cook are going to attack again. If they feel this, it's it's game over. <laughs> if there's if there are no shields, it's game over. cook so it's, it's game over <laughs> the cook rolled uh, two might and a shield as well as one of this smith rolled a might but she had two left so it's three damage uh, the smith only had two health points left um, he, so he would be taken down to zero because of his shield, uh, but it was not enough, fortunately. So we we were so bloody close. <laughs> that is what is, uh, and that is Escape the Dark Castle. That is like right there. That is the reason why this game is so addictive because you've we've gone in such like a crazy intense journey to get to this final room, and we've struggled so much um and just two dice we had two dice two wisdom left uh to try and get rid of uh, in order to escape the dark castle uh, and just like that our lives were snuffed out uh, folks that is escape the dark castle um that is a playthrough of the core set of the game um i am hoping to actually play through some of the adventure packs uh, later date so if you have enjoyed this do let me know down in the comments below uh, and I'll bring the adventure pack solo plays to you uh, later on down the line. Uh, but if you want to pick up Escape the Dark Castle as well, there is a link down in the video description to where you can go and check it out. If you have enjoyed this, uh, it's your first time across the channel, feel free to subscribe. We kept up to date of when our videos go live. But until next time, folks, have a great week. I'll speak to you all soon.